I really, really don't know where to start. The past two years, as you know, have been scary as I've deteriorated so much more and had three cardiac arrests and it's the reason behind those that have come to a head and now caused my doctors to give us the serious talk, the one that you never want to hear. Not at my age. As a mother, a wife, a daughter, a friend. They say we're looking at end of life situation here if they don't find a solution to this metabolic acidosis. And I'm already far too complex with my neurocardiogenic syncope so this just complicates it for them and the blood pressure drops even more when my bicarb levels do. So they say they need to take this very serious now and cannot look after me in this situation anymore. In their words, to even try to save you, we need to have you in the major hospital under the renal doctor's care. In the renal unit, I need new port access because I have no access to my veins in an emergency. Despite the risk of infection, it can happen from any needle. But if we use a port, and remove it as soon as it's finished, then who knows? Who knows how the risk is? I think that's probably one of the least of the problems. I, I don't know. Infection's just as much of a problem as the illness I have. The infusions are becoming far too frequent, meaning I'm not absorbing anything and it's not sustainable. My GP reiterated this today to myself and Jake, one of my boys. He has, of course has been in tears since. And my GP wants to call a family meeting so everyone understands how serious this is. I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to fight this. I want my miracle. We sat at home together with Mark and the kids and spoke to mum and dad on the phone and discussed options moving forward. The first being they want me closer to the city, which is not that easy to do, obviously, but we'll discuss it. But it's far too dangerous, me being out here in a rural area. The second discussing the reality of this possibly taking my life. The GP tried to describe it as giving someone a diagnosis of a terminal illness, but not knowing how and when. But with me, my condition is complicated and rare. We know even less about what's going to happen, so. All I can say is that I'm gonna fight I'm going to fight like hell to stay here because I have a husband and children who need and love me. <laughs> I have friends who also love and mean the world to me and I know what it's like to lose someone and I don't want anyone to suffer my loss. So I'm going to fight for you too, not just for me. I want to be here. I need to be here. <laughs> and I begged for a cure, a miracle doctor. Someone like Sean Murphy from The Good Doctor. <laughs> oh, Dr. House, I don't care. Someone, anyone like that, just find me someone. I've done everything I can to hope that my wish to live is granted. I graciously accept your love, thoughts, supports and prayers, no matter what religion or no religion. I appreciate it all because... If you believe it can help me, then I hope it can too. I want to see my kids grow up. My stepkids have lost one mum and they can't lose another. I want to be a grandmother one day. I want to grow old with my husband. And I never want my parents to lose another child. We still need to get through Tegan's spinal surgery in a couple of months. And that's a six to eight hour operation that needs 10 months rehabilitation. So again, she needs her mum. She doesn't understand. 
<laughs> what child would, let alone an intellectually disabled child? Anyway, I don't want to leave this sounding sad or, sad or morbid. Because, you know, I'm a positive person. Of course, I'm devastated to hear the reality that I may lose my life to this and sooner rather than later if we don't move quickly. But I'm positive that because a plan is being put in place, I might at least improve some quality of life. And we can take each day at a time, appreciating every single second with every person I have the joy of loving and knowing. All I can say is thanks so much for sticking with me, for loving me, for caring about me. And thank you for listening. And to those of you helping to try and make one of my biggest dreams come true, I can't thank you enough. I love you all.